those butterflies is so busy that I bet it doesn't even mind me. Precious is that. These are definitely a few of my favorite things. Precious and few are the moments we two can. And if I ever find my way back home It just wouldn't be fair that is so wonderful. Well, I'll be leaving this meadow here shortly, but just what a bounty of food. Apple trees and flower, nectar, blackberries back there. And what a wonderful treat this meadow was. I think it's the Swimmington Meadow. I'll have to get back on that one. It's, it's in my map. But, uh, Oh, the deer and the bear, just so much food for air, all the wildlife, all the animals. What a, what a glorious day. What a beautiful day. Thank you. Well, here's the chicken mushroom. The sulfur shelf actually uh, just starting, really in, in its infancy. And we have uh, multiple clusters here of... Uh, the sulfur shelf. The chicken mushroom just getting started. This is going to really fan out into some really big pieces. They're quite edible and uh, it's growing on a live maple tree. But it suggests to me that this maple is is having some problems. But isn't that gorgeous? Mm -hmm. Just getting started. And more on the other side. Look at that. Holy smokes. Well, I'll tell you, I'd like to come by here in about five or six days. That'll be just ready for picking. Uh, it's, wow, it's going to be an awful lot. Yeah, they're quite edible. What a delicious mushroom. Picked one fresh. This, they need to grow another week or so. Well, here we are. It's Saturday morning. It's August 13th. I'm heading out after... You know, a nice night's sleep here at the uh, shelter behind me, a uh, uh, pine swamp branch shelter, I believe it's called. Yeah, a little, little old, a little run down. It's got a fireplace. Could be good in, in uh, temperate weathers. Uh, has a fireplace built into it in the back there, so if it was quite colder, it would be uh, very much appreciated. I'm nestled in the uh, midst, of, midst of all of these beautiful wildflowers here and I thought it would be a great time to to say I got weather coming in this evening got a big push looking to get 15 16 miles in today and uh, make my way you know onward ever north you know I've got a hundred mile 
uh, run on this resupply here from uh, Parisburg, where I just uh, come out of uh, a couple of days ago. And um, got some beautiful sights coming up in the next couple of days, so I'm really excited about the things to come. Those butterflies yesterday, that was that was so much fun, and, and I learned how to get close to them and touch them and have them climb on me just by leaving my hand around the uh, the flowers. So that truly was a treat. Behind me is a, I would say, a future hotspot for uh, through hikers, long distance backpackers on the Appalachian Trail. It is a, a piece of property owned by the man, uh, Captain. And, and if we can uh, just pan out here, and look out, he's got a, a bosun's chair, actually on a zip line here, where you sit on it, you clip your, your backpack to the carabiner, and you pull yourself across the Stony Creek here, onto, you know, his property. There's plenty of campsite here, and that his home is over there as well. And I believe that the captain provides uh, uh, beverages of, of soda something like that but I thought that with the sound of the water that I would take this time to you know talk about water it is uh, August 13th roughly the the middle of August traditionally the hottest month of the year traditionally the driest month of the year and uh, really in the last two weeks now, uh, water has been hard to come by. Remember up on uh, the Chestnut Ridge Shelter, um, the spring before the shelter, which was its water source, was bone dry. There were, there were many um, uh, creeks, and, or not creeks, streams and springs uh, before that that were dry. And I've had some long, long hikes um, not really without water, but a shortage of water and, and really trying to manage my water. But I, with that said, I could also say that that has been a problem from time to time, all the way from the beginning, back in uh, Springer Mountain in Georgia. Not necessarily right there, that creek that you followed gave you kind of a, you know, a, uh, an idea of water abound, but that's not true. And so right now I'm I'll be hiking along Stony Creek, but uh, I will turn from Stony Creek and go back up, and there can be a shortage of water up ahead, so I need to plan ahead. I, the other day, when I came out of Parisburg a couple of days ago, um, I had heard from Old Crow that the shelter up on Rice Field was dry. I left Parisburg late, it was a seven mile hump to Rice Field. I wanted to camp there because of the, the top of the mountain is, uh, is a field and down below the valleys all the way over into uh, West Virginia. It was quite gorgeous. A beautiful, beautiful um, sunset was admired by, by all of us here on the internet, I'm sure. And. Uh, but there was no water. I ended up carrying almost eight liters of water up that mountain so that I could use water for supper that night and for breakfast that day and another 12 miles almost before I got to water the following day, which was yesterday. So I have to keep in mind and with the sound of water now, uh, water's here, but it's not always the truth, not always the case. So. Uh, I plan on going another probably three miles. There should be water there where I will stop to have a snack, drink a lot of water. One of the tricks to do, one of the key things to do is when you get to water, drink a lot of it. Perhaps store some. I mean water is an issue as far as weight and weight is an issue as far as long term backpacking but with that said you need water you can go a lot longer without food than you can with water and especially in the heat and humidity of August though we have a little break and it's not so bad just wanted to 
mention all of this because it is real and it is real fun but you also have to be safe you have to be smart and uh, well happy trails let's get back on it and once again scientific terms that's a doozy now this baby broke off uh, pretty recently you can see the how bright brightly colored the uh, the the outer bits are that that's a fresh break and here's the Appalachian Trail and that big old beauty just went down and fell right across it it's a good 30 maybe 40 45 feet along right across the trail so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna head out this way and around because there's no getting around that that's enormous and it's right across I guess I could walk on top of it but you know what with my full pack of food, I, I think I'm gonna walk around it. Uh, but anyways, these are these are the things that happen. A lot of trees go down all the time, everywhere. And without the, uh, this is the Roanoke uh, Mountain Club's uh, area here, and without the dedication of volunteers to come up through all the states, the 2,200 miles of Appalachian Trail, to maintain it, just to do, just to clear it from all the all the tree falls, all the windfalls, is a, a task in itself. So I thought I'd mention that, and uh, yeah, a doozy, once again. And from the other perspective, on the other side, and here we are. I guess I could have went around it or up and over and through it, but gee whiz, what an obstacle. All the same, all in a day's work. I need to mush on. I've got a lot of miles ahead for the day. <laughs>